Hello pals, it's that time of the month where we get to talk about all that I've read and give some reviews. So it is time for my September wrap up. I really tried to lean more into like the creepy reads earlier to start off the spooky season this September and I've read a good mix of things. I read 15 books so I was pretty proud of myself and let's just dive into all that I read. First up is House of Roots and Rune by Erin A. Craig. This was highly anticipated for me because I loved House of Salt and Sorrows when I read it like two, three years ago. The very cool BNN sprayed edge edition. This book jumps forward 12 years and we're following Verity. She's the youngest Tomas sister. If you don't know, House of Salt and Sorrows is a 12 dancing sisters retelling and all of the sisters are kind of slowly dying one by one. So now we're following the youngest on an adventure of her own and she lives in the Tomas Manor with her oldest sister Camille and Camille really shelters her and doesn't really let her do a lot of things or really like leave the property and all of the other sisters are kind of scattered about this world so she's really frustrated because now she's just uh coming of age so one day Verity gets this letter that she is to be commissioned for a portrait of the Duke's son in Bloem, which is this land of petals, and they call themselves people of the petal, whereas the land they are now in House of Salt and Sorrows is, um, they're the people of the salt, so they're like the island people. And her sister says no, and reveals to her that she cannot really be trusted to be out there and be on her own because she actually sees ghosts and have been seeing ghosts her entire life. And she's like, what the heck? And then flees to this manor and kind of sets out on her own. So we have Verity that is kind of trying to make her own way in this world. And then things in this manor get really spooky. She starts to develop feelings for the Duke's son, Alex, who she's painting a portrait of. And their romance is really sweet. But there are some twisted things going on in this seemingly sickeningly sweet greenhouse and I loved it. Definitely if you are someone that is looking for a plant horror, this has all of those plant horror descriptions. I gave this one five stars. I feel like it's just a really great blend of fantasy but horror and sweet romance. Like it kind of straddles the line between all three of those genres and I liked how they were kind of all mixed together because I enjoy this like gothic horror fantasy romance niche quite a lot. Yeah, it got like really terrifying and I did not know the direction that the horror was going to take until we got there and it was really intriguing. And the end of this book made me want to throw my book against the wall. I was like, what the heck is going on here? Um, but I just looked up and it seems like this series was sold with another book. So I think that there is going to be a sequel, but nothing has been announced. But um, this can't be the ending because I was like, what the heck? But again, if you like House of Salt and Sorrows, I think that you will really enjoy the sequel. It takes place in a different world following a different sister, but it has a lot of the elements that, of course, if you loved it in the first book, you will like it in this book. And yeah, I just, again, it just really calls out to this niche of genres that I really, really enjoy. Next we have Rolling Seek Dan by Victoria Aveline. If you don't know, alien romances have just kind of become my thing this year. So this is the seventh book in the Clacanian series and on this world the population is like 20 to 1 men to women so the race is kind of dying out. So all the men go to husbandry school to try and be like the best husband ever to like get the woman to want to have babies with them. And so in the seventh book we're following Sikhtan and Sophia and after kind of like this planetary tour gone wrong, Sophia is captive in Sikhtan's city. And what I really like about this series is that um, there's a lot of different series in this world with like slightly different versions of the Clicanians. I don't know if you'd call them like species or ethnicities within this world. So you get like a lot of different settings even though it's in the same series and Victoria Evelyn just writes such amazing alien romance and Seek Dan is like, he's like this king that has like a very strict rule but all of a sudden this like human that's captive that he's using as like a political bargaining chip he's like feeling things for her and oh, it's just so good the forced proximity was good like 
the way that Sophia was really able to like come into her own and like stand up for all the humans like I just love the series so so much I adore it um definitely one of my favorite alien romance series and I gave it five stars the next book that I read is Alien Protector Mate by Melissa Emerald. I was just trying out like a bunch of different alien romance authors um, and in this one these girls crash land on a planet and there are these men that have literally never seen a woman in their life. They like sacrifice to this temple and then that's like where the woman of their species propagates. Something weird going on with that and so they've never seen one and they like their skin like sparkles. They have like these little sparkles on their skin and they're winged and I ended up giving this one three stars. Like, it was cute. It was entertaining. We had this, like, cute little world. And, like, the hero is a virgin with a big fat V. Like, he's literally never seen a woman before. I think he, like, barely understands the concept of sex. And our girly, she is more than happy to teach him. So, like, that's a fun trope. Um, so, yeah, I, I gave this one three stars. Like, it was a fun time. Next, I read How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I read this on audio, and it was so scary it was so scary we're following louise and her parents pass away in a car accident and so she has to go to her childhood home of south carolina and kind of take care of the parents affairs with her estranged brother but when you get there you find out that her mom was like a puppet collector and these puppets might not want the house to be sold it was actually terrifying it was terrifying i never want to see a puppet again in my life like I have had enough puppets um, and when I was reading this book there was this car that I kept seeing near work that had a Chucky doll hanging out the top and every time I was like reading this book and I like see this car coming like up the incline of the parking garage of work and I literally thought I was hallucinating I'm like I'm reading too much about puppets like what is this Chucky doll doing the car had like a muffler on it so it was really loud and I kept seeing him around and now that I finished the book I haven't seen him so I really feel like I was being haunted by a doll while reading about this book about haunted dolls. Anyways. So yeah, book was terrifying. It was gory. It was, oh, I just got, <laughs> I get the chills thinking about it. It was really scary and I ended up giving it four stars. Next, I read Claimed by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. Along with Victoria Aveline, Zoe Draven is like my new all-time favorite alien romance author because she can write and she can write an alien romance. So this is the second book in the Horde Kings of Drakkar series and we have this world of Drakkar where humans have this colony and they kind of have to like abide by the laws of the Drakkar who are native to the planet in terms of just like not over hunting or things of that nature like kind of living by their beliefs. We have this Horde King and we have Nell who is a human in one of the villages that are really kind of suffering and she hunts for herself and she gets caught by a horde king but when he sees her he like recognizes something in her and so he takes her as his wife instead of uh, executing her essentially and it's just their story and like the world of your car and all of these like horde kings and their way of life is so beautiful as well as like just like the the relationships are so emotional in the way that like Nell has just been alone her whole life like oh it really got me in the heart and I don't know I just feel like these alien romances have such like a good mixture of world building emotional intensity between the two characters and spice and just like also like with alien romance it's like really fun because you can do like really cool and out there things with your characters and I ate up every second of this and I gave it five stars Next is the book that was literally an instant favorite for me, and that is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Marer. Okay, so in this world, it's like this medieval kind of world. I think about it like Princess Bride kind of world or like Ella Enchanted kind of world where you have like magic and mayhap and it's like just like, I don't know, like a cute, funny fantasy world. I need more fantasies that are funny, like rom-com, like fantasy rom-com marriage kind of those two tropes like I need more like this because I was reading this and I was like this is everything that I could have ever wanted in a book and it made me smile and giggle and kick my feet so so much okay so <clears throat> okay we have Evie and she loses her job she's kind of like klutzy and she, you know she, she's out there struggling so we have the villain he's literally called the villain and he is terrorizing this kingdom and no one knows why so she happens upon him in the woods one day not knowing it was him and 
you know, kind of helped him out. And he's like, you know what, I have a job offer for you. You can be my assistant. So now she's like getting used to being in this kingdom, to working in his like literal office of like minions. Um, and it's so funny, like there's like an HR, there's like, it just like very much like mimics the modern workplace, but it's in this medieval like setting. It's just, it's such like a marriage of different things. And like, it's so funny. And it's just so cute. If you just like like quirky, like absurd, cutesy humor, like you will love this. If you like The Princess Bride, I think you will like this. Um, okay, so Evie is working for the villain and they're kind of just like, there's some conspiracies going on in the office. And okay, this book also, there is no spice in it, which was fine because it was so cute and adorable. But like this book is literally just like two idiots in love that like don't realize that the other one is in love with them. And like, there's just pining and angst and like they clearly love each other but they just don't know and like it just oh my god it just makes me smile like so much because like clearly they just love each other and clearly they're just stupid about it but like I love them and I think there are gonna be more books and like I just can't wait because I don't know I feel like this is a book that I will reread time and time again because it just like made me so happy and while I was reading it because I wanted like similar vibes I watched The Princess Bride which was an A plus choice because it really complimented reading this book really well and oh my god I just love it and I'm obsessed. Next I read The Only One Left by Riley Sager on audio and this was another hit for me so I'm I was having a pretty good reading month in September. So we follow Kit and the year is 1984 and she is a home aid assistant and she kind of gets assigned the assignment that no one wants and she has to go take care of the, the infamous alleged murderer Lenora Hope. So the Hope Mansion is like the seaside crumbling mansion um, and in 1929 it was rumored that Lenora Hope murdered her entire family there. Uh, however there was not enough evidence to really put her behind bars so she just has kind of lived out her life in this manner and no one really goes there however when Kit gets there it's she's discovered that it's because Lenora is actually paralyzed everywhere except for her left hand however there is a typewriter in the room and Kit finds out that Lenora can use it and wants to use the typewriter to communicate and says I want to tell you everything and she starts typing out the story of her life. So we have this dual narrative of like the current timeline with Kit and the things that Lenora is typing about like what actually happened to this family in 1929 and it was so good. It captivated me, had me on the edge of my seat, like I didn't know where things were going to go and it really used that like book within a book narrative structure really well like I think it can be so well done such like an unreliable narrator like I just did not see half of the things that happened I feel like so many plot twists and I I was just hooked I loved it definitely this is my favorite of Riley Sager books that I've read I think I've only read one other one but anyways it was my favorite I really just thought that it was like everything that I love in a thriller because I was captivated the entire time I was listening to it five out of five stars all right, next we have some more alien romance because who am I if not myself? The next one I picked up is Craving the Alien Vampire by Ro Singh. I saw this randomly on Instagram and I was like, you all give it a shot because I read Desire in His Blood by Zoe Draven earlier this year, which was like one of my top books of the year and that was also Alien Vampires. Um, and this was a little novella and it's basically this guy sees this girl that was human that was abducted and they're like on a secret mission and he sees her and he's like I need to buy her for the secret mission but also because I secretly am feeling things for her and pays like five million whatever their currency is for this woman and then it's just like insta lost. So I will say it is a novella but I still end up giving it two stars because I felt like the author put a lot of effort into the spicy scenes and the spicy scenes were very very well written you had like an uh, alien vampire so there's like blood play and biting and whatnot so that's fun however the rest of the plot around these two characters i feel like was really really lacking like it was just like that part was rushed through to get to the spice and for me i need a level of like connection with the characters I need a level of like pining and angst so that it makes the payoff when they finally have spicy spice time more worth it otherwise I'm like I don't know I just if you read a lot of spice like to me it's like I really need that emotional connection with the characters now to enjoy the spice more because if I'm not feeling it then I'm like why do I care about these two people banging and that's kind of how I felt about this book because it just like I just needed more but I do feel like 
for this author like you know it's her first novella like the skills are there I just think that I needed this story personally to be more developed to um, be fully immersed in it okay this next book is if you like the last of us but if with bugs so it's claimed by the hunter Zarkin Warriors book one by Linnea Lee. So the concept is is that there was an apocalypse on earth and these like bug creatures took over the world and there was a bug apocalypse and these Zarkin Warriors are like basically meant to be fighting off these like plague bugs on every single planet that they go to so they found themselves on earth. So we have our main girly she is trying to survive in this bug apocalypse world and a Zarkin warrior happens upon her and he's like oh my god that's my mate. So I ended up giving this one three stars like I thought it was a really intriguing and interesting concept but for me personally oh the bugs they gave me the heebie-jeebies and I was just like I don't like the bugs. I don't like the bugs and I'm not reading alien romance to be like creeped out like I would when I'm reading a horror novel. I'm reading it for like the spice, the faded mates, the, that kind of fun stuff so I don't know it just wasn't my favorite but it was it was pretty well written and like enjoy it was it was fine right so three stars next up I read Foxglove arguably one of my most highly anticipated books of the year you probably always see Belladonna right behind me in my videos because I'm obsessed with it and I talk about it constantly um so this is the story of Signa Farrow and she has always been able to see death and to see spirit. A lot of people in her life just seem to die. So she kind of gets sent around from foster family to foster family until finally she ends up with these distant relatives in Thorn Grove Manor and this family is like a mess. So the mother recently passed away. The father is partying to drown his sorrows. The daughter is sick with whatever killed the mother and the son is like She's trying to figure out what to do with all of this. So Signa gets plopped in the middle of the situation and because she can see ghosts, the ghost of the mother comes to her and is like, hey, I was murdered and I need you to figure out who did it. And so she enters into an alliance with Death himself to kind of solve this mystery. So it's a really interesting, it's like a mix of gothic fantasy, fantasy romance, and murder mystery. So it was really, really fun tying all those elements together. And the sequel focuses now more on Signa and her cousin Blythe. And also, in addition to death, we get introduced to this godlike figure, Fate, in this book. And I loved it. It's really interesting because instead of now being the story mainly between like Signa and death, we also add in these two other characters. And it really expanded the world. There is another murder mystery, although I will say that is probably like more of a subplot than to just all of the different character studies and different things that are going on between all of these people in this book. I am also invested in like Blythe now as a character because I also think that she is very interesting and I love like the the sisterly bond that her and Signa have and about their relationship, even though it goes through its ups and downs. And of course, you also have this like set against a Regency backdrop, so it's just so much fun. I adore the series so much. I feel like there is such beautiful and lyric, lyrical writing as well. And like I fully annotated this and it was just a blast. I am absolutely obsessed with Adeline Grace and I'm obsessed with this book. I wish I could say more about it but like it is a sequel and I don't want to give too many spoilers but I think it ended on an interesting note where the third story is gonna shift of be focusing on some different characters and I think that this book is kind of almost like the transition in the trilogy and I think the last book is gonna be I think the first book was Signa's book I think this book was Signa and Blythe's book and I think the last book is gonna be focusing specifically on Blythe which I think is an interesting way to kind of weave your stories together but I do think there's still gonna be Signa obviously in the third book so I really enjoyed it I thought it was an interesting way to propel the series forward and I mean the aesthetic of this is just everything and I definitely need more books that are like Regency fantasy which I do there are some books that I'm thinking of that I could pick up to potentially read that I was thinking of um the half a soul book by Olivia Atwater I want to say let me know if you've read it let me know if I should do like a reading blog for it or something I don't know but I love the vibes in this book I loved it it was beautiful and I'm obsessed the next book I read is Where Darkness Blooms by Andrea Hanna and I had an arc I don't know where it went 
but I had a physical arc. Anyways, this was supposed to be about Rudy Keeley in April, and I just read it now, but I read it. And I read it in pursuit of more like botanical horror books because I really enjoy that subgenre as well of horror. Um, we have this town of Bishop, and it's like the wind whispers in this town, and it's like surrounded by sunflower fields, and no one really seems to leave. And in this town, women go missing or like die all the time, and no one really does anything about it or thinks anything weird about it. So we follow these four girls, um, two of them are sisters, and their three moms disappeared two years ago, and ever since then they've been living together and just trying to make it by. So there's four different POVs that we're rotating through, and um, they kind of really need to figure out like what is going on in this town. And I will say that this leaned more paranormal thriller than paranormal horror, so I think I kind of went into it with like different expectations. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. I feel like we had really distinct voices for all of our different characters, so I thought that that was really well done. But just in terms of like the mystery and the way that things were done, I feel like it was really hard for me to like completely, totally suspend my disbelief in the way that this world was crafted. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like there were some plot holes in the design of this of this like town it's like I don't know I just didn't I couldn't fully immerse myself in the rules of this world and like why these girls were stuck in this situation um so but I did think that the writing was very well done and uh yeah next I read Starlings by Amanda Linsmeyer and I read this on audio and it was literally a surprise fave for me again I was looking for more like botanical horror books and we have our girly here on the cover with flowers. And so we have Kit and her father recently passed away and after that she learned that she was a grandmother that her father never told her about and so her grandmother's like hey like come visit me and so they go to the small town of Rosemont and it's like this beautiful lush small town where everyone's like thriving and prosperous and happy and there's like these famed eternal roses that bloom year long. But the longer that Kit's there, she's starting to notice that people are, like, treating her and her family really weird. And it seems like the name of Starling, her last name, is, like, really worshipped in this town. And she just can't help but feel that everyone is hiding something from her. And, okay, oh my god. I loved this. Like, I did not know the direction that it was going in. And, like, it was just, like, so eldritch and creepy. And I I just thought that the way that the plot unfolded was so gripping. I was captivated. I thought that it was, like, really intriguing how we had, like, Kit go into this town. And all of these people are treating her so nicely. And they are almost kind of revering her. And she's like, what the heck is going on? I'm just a normal girl. Like, this is really weird that there's this really weird... Um, obsession with her family in this town she doesn't really understand why people are treating her that way and then you kind of like slowly see things unravel and I, I just don't even want to say anything about it but it gets it gets like really twisted and eldritch and like I love the way that the horror unfolded and it was so good definitely one of my new all-time favorite YA horror books and I gave it five stars next is Stolen by Starlight by Sarah Ivy Hill and again, as many alien romances, we start with these girls that have been abducted from their home world and kind of crash land on this world. And in this world, we have Lothan, and he's the king, and all the people change color depending on their mood, so they're like kind of like emotional chameleons. Um, so he's just like a light up guy, essentially. Uh, and he sees our main girly, and he's like, "That's my mate," and she's like what the heck and her sister was like left with the bad aliens that abducted them and she like just wants to try and get her back so i ended up giving this one three stars again like it was fine it was interesting i was intrigued by the world and the characters but it didn't blow me away so i feel like if i read an alien romance i just think that was good that was fine like there's nothing to complain about but there's nothing that super gripped me it's a three star okay and then Next we have Alien God by Ursa Dax, and this one actually did really impress me. So it's the Brides of the Stone Sky Gods. So the Stone Sky Gods can like literally like fly up into the sky and they create like stone and then they punch through it and then they can portal in between different worlds. Pretty cool. So we have these Stone Sky Gods and they're immortal until they find their mates and then because they become mortal. And in this one, um, Wolf Rail has been like in a 
slumber for many many eons because he got in a fight with his cousin who was going mate mad because if you live too long without finding a mate you can go insane and he goes to petition the council for help and they like won't let him in and there's something like really suspicious going on okay so then he goes to his home world and he finds that it's being ransacked by humans and the humans have sent out like a scientific team to like scavenge for resources on his land and he ends up kidnapping one of the humans so one is Torrance and she is a scientist so we love a girl in STEM and they are kind of like in this like wintry world and I just thought that this had so many intriguing world building elements and it was like an intriguing plot line that they were like capturing scientists to then like bring to this world to scavenge for resources and then we have these stone sky gods which are like have really cool powers and i love just seeing how torrens and wolfrael like had to work through their differences and you, i just had a lot of things about alien romances that i loved and i enjoyed it quite a lot and i'm giving it like four four and a half stars and i definitely will be continuing on with this series and reading more from ursa dax the last book that I have to talk about today is The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas and this is a book that I had bought last year and never got to and I'm super happy I got to it this year because it is so beautiful. The Hacienda takes place in 1823 Mexico just after the, the Mexican War of Independence and we follow Beatrice whose father was killed in these conflicts and so now her and her mother are kind of left struggling living off the goodwill of relatives and she sees the chance to marry Rodolfo who is kind of rising in the new government and she takes it and Rodolfo kind of will go for the disgraced daughter of a traitor because his first wife died under mysterious circumstances so they're kind of quid pro quo helping each other out and Beatrice is finally excited to just have like financial stability that's like really all that she wants. She wants a home that she can bring her mother to and to just really take care of them even though her mother really wanted her to marry for love. So we get to the Hacienda and creepy things just start happening. No one in the family will sleep in the house. Her sister-in-law sleeps somewhere else in the property. All of the help they do not sleep in the house and like what really happened to this guy's first wife and the only one that is willing to help her is Andres who is a priest in the like little village that's surrounding this property and wow this is chilling chilling there are so many creepy things that happen in this house and I love this book I gave it five stars it had like a romance subplot that was like angsty tear out your heart kind of romance but then the house itself like it got like brutal it got brutal like it was really scary and if I was her like I would have run away like in the beginning of the book but she, no she really wanted to stay because she had nowhere else to go and uh Beatrice was really going through it she was really going through it so I mean, I think that this is kind of, you know, the story of the resilience of one woman who is just really trying to make a way for herself in a world that is not kind to women and a tender love story and like, oh my god, just like crazy, crazy things in terms of the house. I also thought that the setting was really interesting and it prompted me to look up more things about this time period, which I always enjoy when I read something that's set in a historic time. I end up just like googling a lot of things and I think that the um, economic structure of the time like really informed um, a lot of the story as well with like the structure of like the hacienda being the landowner and then you know all of the different people that worked on the land the different uh, things and like this farm this property itself was prosperous because they um, farmed agava they farmed agava pretty sure um, for pulque is the Mexican word for it and it is some sort of alcohol so yeah alcohol will keep you rich and all the times people always want to get drunk <clears throat> so yeah and I think it just really came to like a crescendo and it just like was a beautifully written dark gothic s s scary horror book and if you like horror if you liked Mexican gothic like you will also really enjoy this book and it was just chef's kiss and those are the 15 books that I read in September. It was a really successful reading month with a lot, a lot, a lot of new favorites. I read a lot of books that I really, really loved. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below and what you thought of them. Please share your thoughts with me. I always love, love, love interacting with you guys in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave, um, 
leave a little house for the hacienda if you have watched this far and have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one